Listen, unless you have an entire pack of fake friends, every ounce as treacherous as the vicious bitch or bastard all your friends are warning you about, it stands to reason they know what they're talking about, that they have your best interests at heart, that they've been down this road before and recognize the danger signs, and they know you really, really well. They know what triggers you. They know the size of your ego. They recognize your weaknesses as well as your strengths. From their vantage point of objectivity, they can see the big picture. They can see that you're being played something you yourself are unable to see because you're being played. The person your friends warn you about through their subtle manipulation has softened you up and opened you up and triggered your innermost feelings and desires, your soul's deepest primal yearnings. Everyone has an ideal of how they want their life to be and who they want to be in this world and it's coming from a wounded place. And we all have our wounds. It's part of being human. And you were attracted to this person because they had qualities that impressed you. You soon learned you had a lot of things in common and there was a synthesis, a meeting of the minds, a common ground. And that you saw the quality of life that you yearn for could be possible possible with the right person and feeling tremendous empathy for their wounds and seeing their potential in the world you desired nothing less than to together reach your goals to share that wonderful ideal of a life and realize your mutual dreams together and it's a glorious feeling that you finally found the right person and it's intoxicating and overwhelming real biochemical reactions are taking place and you marvel at how amazing this all feels and you marvel at how no one has ever made you feel this way before. And the reason for that is simple. Your previous lovers weren't actively and deliberately messing with your head. And you know that there are people like that. Books, TV shows, movies, classic literature, literally teeming with this character type. You probably know a ton of them. You might have been raised by one. And if you need more to convince you that this is the sad, ugly truth that your friends have been warning you about, then do some research of your own. Check out the many websites and videos on the subject of narcissism and narcissistic abuse. I'm just one of many YouTubers covering the subject. Now, let's take it one step further. The relationship your friends have been warning you about has already had a lot of ups and downs. It's become ambivalent and you find yourself walking on eggshells. This wasn't what you wanted, but the relationship keeps pulling you back in. It's good for a while, but it's never quite what it was in the beginning. And then something will happen to blow you apart again. You are losing yourself in the relationship. It's a vicious cycle of diminishing returns, and it's leaving you exhausted mentally, physically, and emotionally. So why can't you just leave? Just cut your losses and pack it in. <laughs> You've honestly done all you can to try to make it work. You've legitimately made an effort to work things out with someone who is irrational, intentionally hurtful, manipulative, even deceptive. You can see that this is toxic. This isn't what you wanted. So what is it exactly that makes it hard for you to leave? This person your friends have warned you about has imprinted onto you powerfully, biochemically and emotionally. You've come to identify with this person based on manipulation. You identify with the relationship based on manipulation. It's a fiction, but a union was created that was real for you. To be with this person, you had to enter their world 
and now you've bonded with their family and their friends, and to break up with your abusive lover would mean giving up all those relationships. And would they even understand your point of view? Do they know how your abusive lover treated you when no one else was looking? And no one wants to be seen as looking like the bad guy. That wound of yours that your abusive lover keeps on digging into is something internal you feel you need to fix. Like there's something missing or broken and you need to make it right. To be the person you want to be and to have that life you feel you want. And this person presented themselves as that missing puzzle piece. Or rather you visualized this person as a potential that. And this wound being triggered and softened up in mind for all the energy you have to provide brings this wound to the surface and fixing it becomes your whole reason for being. And this relationship is a proxy, the vehicle by which the work gets done, the, the fixing, hypothetically. In a very real sense, what is happening here isn't about the person you're involved with, nor even the relationship. What is going on here is in actuality all about you and your own inner life. So you always believed it was right and noble to be the knight in shining armor or a nurturing Florence Nightingale. But codependence isn't living and it isn't love. And those monstrous people are out there, all right, and we attract them unwittingly with our shadow side because it's the darkness they feed off of. And the more we stubbornly believe that we can fix things with only the force of our will, like a video game we're compelled to master or a romantic novel we write in our head, desperately trying to pave the way to, an, to a happy ending, kidding ourselves with the silly notion that if only we can love them enough, they'll finally get it and everything will be okay again. The longer we remain stuck in the horrible relationship and being objective and realistic, you aren't going to be able to fix another person, especially when it's someone who thinks that you're the one causing all the problems. You can only fix yourself. So fix what you can. Take your life back. The first step is to sever the ties and go no contact. Your heart will ache and you'll be haunted by if-onlys, but this kind of love is a drug, biochemically speaking, and there is always withdrawal from a drug. It's going to take a while. You're going to have to tough it out. Don't misinterpret how you feel as meaning that you're missing out on anything. You already got the best that this person had to give, and it was all window dressing. So talk to a therapist if you can, or with someone you trust. Narcissistic abuse is a heavy trip, but facing it head-on is more than worth it because once you tend to your own wounds and find healthy ways of being within yourself, no longer looking to someone else to make you whole, then you won't be susceptible to this personality type. You'll see them for who and what they are. And they'll see you as someone they can't toy with. And they'll go on to the next poor soul who needs to learn the lesson that you've just learned. And you, my friend, will be ready, willing, and available for a healthy relationship with a real, empathic human being. A genuine two-way street where you can be yourself with someone your friends will like and vice versa. All right, this is After Arts, out.